probably already heard that humans' taste for meat is bad for the environment. But meat is so tasty. And it's an important staple in many cultures. And the entire population of Earth isn't spontaneously going vegan anytime soon. But what if I told you there was a solution to this meaty problem? Yes, we're talking non-meat meats. How is alternative meat created? And is it safe to eat? Which meat alternative would you be most likely to try? Lab-grown artificial meat? Space meat? Or plant-based meats like Beyond Burger? None for me, thanks. I'll just stick to eating veggies and meat. We'll dig into the answers to these questions and more as we meet the future of meat. I'm not gonna tell you to stop eating meat, but let's quickly see some mind-blowing stats, shall we? Humans consume 350 million tons of meat per year, and it takes almost 2,000 gallons of water to produce just one pound of beef. Eating artificial meat sounds scary, but artificial doesn't mean it's fake. To grow meat in a lab, scientists take animal stem cells and feed them a mixture of nutrients that tell the cells to grow into meat. Lab-grown meat only takes about two weeks to develop. Compare that to raising a cow, which needs almost three years to provide enough meat for consumption. You could feed a lot more people with this quick artificial stuff, and the result looks a lot like meat. That's reassuring, but what does it taste like? The taste and texture have been described as close to meat, not very juicy, and lacking flavor. Real meat has thousands of flavor molecules that make it enjoyable to eat. Recreating the experience of biting into a juicy steak or hamburger is way more complicated than we think. But when faced with a challenge, you can always depend on scientists to try something gross. Researchers are looking into using insect cells to simulate the taste of seafood. Muscle cells from fruit flies, caterpillars, and moths have been used to recreate special lobster dinners. So try not to think about that the next time you're in the mood for seafood. Cultivating meat from animal stem cells isn't the only option. There's an even more science fiction type of approach, which we're calling space meat. NASA attempted to create meat in space way back in 1967. Astronauts spend an average of six months in space. To keep a crew in space longer and without supply runs, NASA needed to find a way of providing food. After all, space vehicles have limited resources and they haven't launched Space McDonald's yet. The solution? Just mix carbon dioxide with microbes to produce food. NASA scientists use a class of microbes that convert carbon dioxide into food. This process is a lot like a plant's photosynthesis. Astronauts exhale, add water and power, then bring in these single-celled organisms called hydrogenotrophs to produce food in space. This cycle seemed sustainable since it was almost as easy as breathing. Fast forward to 2008, and a couple of scientists picked up the space meat idea. These scientists established a company known as Coverti. Its mission is to recycle the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Their technology captures the air's carbon dioxide and adds it to fermentation tanks with the hydrogenotrophs plus minerals, water, oxygen, and nitrogen. The advanced fermentation process creates a protein-rich flour with an amino acid profile like a meat proteins. Is all this Franken-meat safe? Unfortunately, there is no definitive answer yet. Conventional meat is loaded with antibiotics that find their way into our bodies when we eat it. One of the important advantages of lab-grown meat is that it's free of antibiotics. But lab-grown red meat is still red meat. It can still increase the risk of developing cardiovascular disease, some cancers, and type 2 diabetes. So while lab-produced meat may be slightly healthier than conventional meat, we should consume it in moderation. Is artificial meat any better for the planet? Supporters of lab-grown meat claim that compared to conventional beef, lab-grown meat could lower greenhouse gas emissions by 92%, reduce land use by 95%, and reduce water use by 
However, some recent studies point out that the carbon dioxide produced while making meat in the lab stays in the atmosphere much longer than the methane produced by livestock. So it's not certain whether lab-grown meat reduces greenhouse emissions or not. But don't worry, no one's coming to take away your precious meat just yet. And who knows, maybe in the future you'll be eating a lab-grown steak created by your very own breath. What else could change in the future of food, I wonder? Check out Our Crickets, the Food of the Future on Origins of Food. <laughs>